Hi guys, so this is uh, the drawing of axial shear and bending moment diagrams for frames. This is a continuation to what we had on uh, uh, Thursday. Uh, I'm going to do another example, but this example is going to be a little bit more involved. And we're especially going to talk about how to handle um, the T in the, the frame. So the frame that is in front of us is as follows. Here we have two hinges at um, A and B, and we have an internal hinge here at C, and the presence of this internal hinge at C is actually what's making this structure uh, fully determinate. Uh, before we start drawing, obviously, we need to figure out what the uh, reactions are, and that's what we are going to do on uh, this slide. Here, I am assuming the directions of AY and AX, and by and bx now i said before that when i have an internal hinge uh, then i can take either the left part the right part or the left part but since both of the reactions are level i could actually take the moment either about a or about b so i elected to take the moment about a and using the uh, clockwise as my positive sense and this will lead to minus 8, which is this distance here, times by, since it's going in the opposite direction to what I'm assuming to be positive. Uh, then I'm going to have this concentrated force, which is 40 kN, which is about 1.5 meters from this edge, which means that I have 5 plus half this distance, and that's why I have 6.5 meters over here. Plus for the distributed load, I have 20 times 8 times 4 four and it's going to be somewhere in the middle and that's going to be my um, my 20 times 8 plus we have this and again this is going to be in the middle here as well and this is going also uh, clockwise hence the positive direction and that's 10 times 6 times 3 minus this load which is on the uh, which is on the cantilever here and that's going to be minus 60 times uh, 2 this will give me by to be equal to 120 kilo newtons then using summation of fy equal to 0 will lead to aoi being 140 kilo newton now i'm going to take the right part uh, the only reason I took the right part because I have less loads here than I would have on the left part. Uh, again, summation of moment about C is equal to zero, which is at the internal hinge, taking the same direction here as the positive direction. Then I'm going to have minus 120 times 3 plus 40 times 1.5, which is this right here plus 20 times 3 times 1 half, and that will give me Bx to be equal to 35 kilonewton. Using summation of Rx equal to 0, I'll get Ax to be 25 kilonewtons. Now, I'm ready to start uh, drawing, but before that, we need to find the internal forces in the frame members. And as I said on Thursday, once you have the right practice, uh, you probably will be able to do this without taking the frame uh, apart, but I'm going to do so uh, right now. So I'm taking the first part, I'm taking part AD, and then uh, this D that we have over here. Uh, we could actually start here, and I'm going to take this just before the joint D here. So here I have my 140 kilonewtons and my 25, which are my reactions i'm going to first off and of course here i have these three unknowns and which are this moment right here this vertical force axial and then the shear force here all right so i'm just going to use simply summation of fx is equal to zero and by that i will be able to find this value right here which is 35 kilonewton which is simply the minus 25 plus 10 times 60 will give me 35 doing summation of fy equal to zero will give me the 140 kilonewton right here which is equal and opposite to the reaction take the moment about d is equal to zero and here i'm taking the again the clockwise direction being positive Okay, and that will lead to 25 times the distance 
6 minus 10 times 6 square over 2 and this will give me minus 30 kilonewton which is giving me an indication that's going to be again this right here okay so now i have found these three this is 30 kilonewton 35 140 kilonewton meter now since again if i close this joint they have to be equal to zero so now this will be equal and opposite and this also equal and opposite and this also is equal and opposite all right now if i go back to the cantilever part let me use a different color i guess which is this part right here now summation of fy is obviously the summation of fx, of fx is equal to zero so i don't have any uh, forces over here so even just to make sure that you know that this is equal to zero now doing summation of fy equal to zero so this will be 60 uh, doing the moment it will be 60 times 2 so this is minus 120 kilonewton per meter in the direction again going back to this side these must be equal and opposite so this becomes 120 and this becomes 60 so now if i go to join d i have a 60 over here i have the 120 over here i found the 35 30 kilonewton meter and 140 kilonewton meters so i'm just going to do a simple semi uh, equilibrium equation which with summation of fx equal to zero so this 35 will become this 35 then summation of fy equal to zero i have 60 kilonewton and 140 so this must be 80 kilonewton doing summation of moment here i have 120 and i have another i have 120 kilonewton and 30 kilonewton so this will become obviously 150 kilonewton opposite to these two so now i move to the rest of the parts now this is the part with the distributed load on it again i just took 150 kilonewton from part D, from joint D, the 35 and the 80 kilonewton, which again are equal and opposite. Now I'm going to do the equilibrium equation as well. Summation of Fy equal to zero would have the 80 minus 20 times 8, which is 160. So this will again be 80. So I know I I know these, all right, and I need to figure out what these are and this is summation of fx equal to zero so this will be 35 take summation of moment about e equal to zero you will get 150 kilonewton meter and i'm going to leave that up to you to kind of figure out how to get these uh, numbers then go back to e so sorry for the interruption <laughs> where was i okay so we found out these now we go back to the other part and this is again just before joint f again these are equal and opposite the 150 with this 150 uh, the 35 kilonewton with this 35 kilonewton and obviously the 80 kilonewton as well here again using the moment uh, or oh, equilibrium equations i'm sorry we have 80 versus 80 the 35 versus the 35 as far as the moment goes i have 150 kilonewton uh, minus um, 35 times this distance here which is equal to three i think and that will give me a moment of 80 kilonewton meter now once i find that it's going to equal an opposite to this joint uh, right here okay i'm going to look now into the cantilever over here now i know what this force is because summation of f y is equal to zero so i have 40 so this 40 will translate to this 40 over here now i have again this is 40 times one and a half will give me 60 kilonewton meters and you can see this is 60 so this is 60 as well so now here i have 80 kilonewton meter and 60 kilonewton meter add both of them up you will get 140 kilonewton meters here i have 80 this one plus 40 this one will give me 120 kilonewton meters summation of effects equal to zero this 35 will oppose this 35 right here now if i go back to the rest of the frame i'm just going to put equal and opposite 120 kilonewton the moment 140 kilonewton and this is 35 kilonewton so as you see we go back to the reactions and the summation of moment about this point 
is obviously equal to zero. So now we have everything ready to start drawing the moment diagram, axial and shear. I'm going to start with drawing the axial force at the beginning. Okay. Now here, as I said, everything inside here is negative and everything outside is positive. Negative being compression and positive being tension. So if you look at the axial force, we have this is going upward. This is telling me that this member actually is under compression. Hence, we have minus 140 kilonewton going up all this way. This We have no axial forces here, so this is zero. Here we have the minus 35 kilonewton. Again, this is pushing in and this is pushing in. It's telling me that here I have a compression. So this is my minus 35 kilo. In Newton and now the shear force over here became my axial force to this member up to this point So this is also going to be minus 80 then I have also the reaction 120 pushing in and 120 pushing this way as well So this is also minus 120 kilo Newton and you can see that the entire frame is actually under compression now going to the shear force diagram Again, here's my positive side and here's my negative side. As we know, clockwise rotation gives me positive shear. So going this way, this is my 25 kilonewton. Then because of the distributed load, this will become a straight line. And this will go up to minus 35 kilonewton. So this is the shear part. Again, this is positive right here and this is negative for the cantilever part again counterclockwise is negative so the rotation is going to be like this so this is going to be also minus 60 kilo newton here again positive shear going up 80 distributed force going back all the way to minus 80 kilo newton and the axial force here is also becomes now my shear force again this is rotating clockwise, hence the positive value. And that will go straight up till the end. Okay, and it will close out with my reaction. For this part, we have minus 40 kilonewton for the same reason that is for the cantilever here. So this is again, this is my negative shear. Uh, here also negative shear and here is positive shear. So that is how we draw the shear force diagram. Moving all the way to the bending moment diagram. And uh, let's take that uh, part by part. First of all, the moment at this point obviously is equal to zero. And this point is equal to zero. And this point is also equal to zero. So these values we are sure of. Here we have the moment as we got from the analysis to being uh, minus 30 kilonewton. Uh, again, I draw on the tension side, which means inside is positive and outside is negative. Okay. Now, here we have uh, 30 kilonewton. Again, so the whole point is drawing this, not actually finding where the maximum uh, points are. And as I explained this on uh, Thursday, I'm just going to uh, draw a straight line from this up till the end obviously and uh, this value over here is simply minus 30 plus 0 over 2 which will be minus 15 add to that wl square over 8 which is uh, 45 the w being 10 and uh, the length being the entire length of the frame divide that by 8 give me 45 so it will be minus 15 plus 45 and I'll get plus 30 kilonewton meter and again this is not the maximum moment this is just the value of the moment at the middle of this member right here all right now for this part the cantilever part I have a minus 120 kilonewton meter again I'm drawing on the tension side the minus 20 is something like this so I also always draw on the tail so that's why I have 120 up here and since this is going to be a straight line 
over here and as far as 150 again this also have this direction so again i'm drawing on the tail right here so here i have minus 50 here i have another minus 50 over here as well so i go again to the middle of the of the frame which is here about four meters from here this is going to be minus 150 minus 150 over 2 which is obviously minus 150 and wl square over 8 which is the value of 160 so that will leave me with 10 kilonewton meter and then again this is a second degree as you see it goes through the zero which is supposed to be since the value of the moment is zero uh, over here all right again as far as uh, this far goes as a certain class if this is minus 150 then this is minus 150 if this is positive 150 then this will also be a positive 150 if this is going outside then this is going outside if this is going inside then this also will be going inside all right so these are always equal no matter what the only disruption as i explained that before which was on the example on thursday is the presence of a concentrated moment and since there is none so these two must be uh, must be equal and this obviously will drop to minus 80 right and then at this point we have also minus uh, 40 as you can see at the t section again for the pre for the lack of presence of a concentrated moment these three numbers should be equal all right meaning all oh, the summation of these three numbers should be equal to zero to be more uh, accurate so this is how we draw again this is uh, this is being a straight line since the shear is constant uh, the slope of the shear actually will be the value uh, it will be the slope of, of this shear right there all right uh, this will conclude the class for today if you have any questions feel free to uh, email me and you guys have a nice and safe day today